Hi. Um, I just pulled my QSI 690 off the scope in the observatory because I'm switching over for galaxy season. So I'm gonna take this off and swap it with the ASI 183 MC and, um, and see how that goes. Um, I'm here in South San Francisco. It's very light polluted, as you can imagine. Last year I tried during galaxy season to do some broadband imaging with the filters and the QSI camera. And due to all the light pollution, you need so much integration time. The problem is with this camera, I was doing five minute exposures, but with the airport so close by, I was throwing maybe 25% away because of huge low airplanes flying through the frame. Um, so I'm going to give this a try because I can do fast, quick exposures, hopefully not waste as many. I'm also going to put on the uh, LPS D2 light pollution filter. Um, some people, there's, there's different, uh, how do I want to say? There's different camps on whether to use a light pollution filter or not to use it. I am clearly not the best processor in the world with post-processing. So I'm going to see if I can get a little bit better with broadband imaging going the color camera and light pollution filter route where I'm at. Um, it may not work, but for now, we're going to give it a try. All right, back to the ASI camera. I packed it all up because I thought I was going to sell this and then I just decided to hold on to it and kind of glad I did. The back focus on the QSI camera was 50.2 millimeters. This one's only 6.5, so I'm going to add some spacers to match that, so hopefully my focus is just right on and there's not going to be a lot of refocusing hassle to deal with. Okay, so I took some time and uh, matched my spacing, so it should be pretty parafocal with the QSI that I took off. Um, I'm going to go reinstall this, uh, get all the wiring settled, and then in a few hours we will open up the observatory, uh, dial in the programming, and take some test shots. So we'll be back for that in a bit. Um, yeah, so don't go anywhere. next night. Last night I uh, got everything set up and dialed in and ended up doing some imaging on uh, the Bodes Nebulas. So we'll see how that data turns out. Got about nine hours of imaging on it and uh, since tonight is my last clear night in the forecast for a little bit, I'm going to switch over to M106. But I thought I would just do a quick video showing how I go about getting started for a, an imaging session for the night. So obviously I open up the observatory, click on the power, and then uh, log in and uh, get everything fired up. So let me go through this here. So the first thing I fire up is SkyX. Um, let's 
So I'll uh, connect the telescope. And then of course, after being shut down, it asks to home. So I just go ahead and do that. So I let that do its thing. Um, while that is, I always wait till it finds home before I fire up Voyager. I don't know why, I probably don't need to, but it's just what I like to do. Make sure everything is uh, working properly one step at a time. So I'll let this do its thing. Um, And then we'll move forward here to uh, Fire Ant Voyager. All right, so we're tracking, we're all good. So now I go about firing up Voyager. And Voyager will actually fire up the Scar, it'll start up the Sky X as well if I shut down, but I just like to I don't know, just manually do it, I guess. So, all right, so we've got Voyager open. I also open up the Fit Viewer, so that's ready to go. Run in a little dual panel area here, so. All right, so that's that's good. So, let's come up here. So everything, I've already got Voyager all set up. Um, if you guys are interested in how I go about setting up Voyager for an imaging session and kind of how I dial it in for my situation, go ahead and comment below that you'd like to see that. Um, it's different for everybody and I am by means not using this program to the fullest extent by any means. Um, I consider what I'm doing very basic with it. Since I'm just imaging one uh, target all night, I will just use the on the fly setup. I'm, I don't need to run any drag ship drag script because I'm going to be here. So anyway, back to this. So I'm just going to start up, connect, pardon the echo. I'm in my kind of storage slash work room, I guess. <laughs> All right. So everything's set up. Everything looks good. Uh, no guiding because I'm doing unguided imaging with the, um, with the MIT, it does it well. So, all right, I open up my on the fly and also pardon the dehumidifier that just kicked on. I probably should have shut that off, but at this point, oh well. <laughs> so, okay, then I'm gonna open up my sequence that I've already got pre-set up, so. There we go, and then I just uh, I just kind of go through and make sure everything looks good. So set for twenty. I mean, I, I already set this all up, but I just like to do a quick go over to make sure everything is uh, where it needs to be. Managing the meridian flips, guiding is unguided, but I'm still wanting to dither, so I dither every exposure. Uh, three pixels, pretty heavy dither, but that's what I like. So, um, focus, uh, I use the local field. I find it works good for me, um, for, uh, my setup. Uh, the good night, in case if it's an error, it'll just park the mount and, uh, warm up the camera and, same thing. So here's what I end up changing. Here's what I do end up changing is the sequence end timer. So about 5.30 a.m. is when uh, astro astronomical twilight starts in the morning. So let's see, I'm at 7.17 here. We're starting at about 7.30. So we'll go, you know, 7.30, 8.30, 9.30, 10.30, 11.30, 12.30, 1.30, 2.30, 3.30, 4.30, 5.30, 6.30, 7.30, 8.30, 9.30, 10.30, 11.30, 12.30, 1.30, 2.
The camera has been cooling. It automatically starts cooling when I connect everything. So we're slewing over right now. Um, I'm sure that I'm using this program very novicely compared to how it's intended to be using it, how it's intended to be used, but it's the method that I've gone with and I, I, I like it. So whatever works for you, whatever works for one person, Hopefully it can work for another, and if not, you just kind of change it around until it works for you. So, that's the great thing about this hobby, is we can, no matter what stage we are in learning, there's always something more to be learned. So, and as I work through this and watch and read about other things, I learn something new, and if it works for me, I implement it. So, anyway. Alright, so we are tracking, we're good, so... Um, my next thing that I do is I, uh, run an autofocus routine. Okay, so clearly, this is my theory on this right now, is we're still not quite at astronomical twilight. But the other thing, M106 is still a little low on the horizon. I really wasn't planning to start till about 8 o'clock. And I have a ton of light pollution. So I think that what is going on is we are... Um, we're hitting... A light pollution situation. So with that being said, we're gonna try this again, but I'm gonna go over to, we're just gonna get rid of this. I'm going to use this and we are going to, all right, so what we'll do is we're just gonna go up to something a little higher. We're gonna go up to M81. We're gonna use this. We're gonna go to, yes, it's just gonna do a quick slew up. Not too far away. And then we are going to run this autofocus routine again. And here you can see we're picking up a lot more stars because we're not dealing with a light pollution situation, so. at least a low horizon looking to the light pollution of San through South San Francisco towards the bay. All right, so not the best curve we started, uh, but it's okay, we'll, we'll run it again as it cools down a little more. Um, Let's run it one more time, now that we're more adjusted. We're clearly getting, uh, the seeing is not quite as good this evening as it was last night getting uh, the stars are a little more bloated but all right so now that we're focused I will this isn't the this isn't the target we're actually going to be using but it's the one we're going to play with right now There we go. So that um, I can capture some more data for the next hour, hour and a half as I wait for M106 to rise up instead of wasting this time. So 
get that going and then uh, we'll run you through that and then I'll say goodbye. So we're there, we're there. So the net last thing I do before I start my sequence is I will precise point the telescope. So what it does is it takes a photo and plate solves it and moves everything right to the framing coordinates up here that I have dialed in. So as you can see, here's my here's my framing. Everything's looking good. Wasn't quite where it was supposed to be, so it's doing another one. You can see it shifted just a bit. All right, everything is good. So now we're just going to go up to the sequence, and since I've I manually override everything because we just pointed it, we just we've we're there. Uh, we're not guiding, and I've already focused. So now we're just going to hit run, and it's going to start exposing. And uh, that's pretty much how I get going for the evening. Uh, I'm sure I rambled on a bit, but um, hopefully you found some of this interesting. I hope that uh, maybe you learned something in this video or at least saw how I went about doing things. Um, hopefully you took something good away from it. I will be back with another video at some point and I think I will probably try and uh, We'll see if I get some of these images from this evening and yesterday evening processed before I post this video and I'll put them up at the end here. Um, if not, I'll put them up and maybe make a little processing video for that. Anyhow, have a good night, clear skies, and we'll see you next time. Bye.